Hi guys, let's have a look at tracing a logo. And for this exercise, I'm going to use a very common motorcycle logo. And there's lots of them out there. Simply go to um, Google and search for motorcycle logos. You'll find hundreds of them to trace. Very easy, great designs. So, let's have a look. Now the Triumph is a simple design, really. We can look in Affinity Designer the Triumph logo image and first off we'll open the image in Designer. Now you can find this image out there on the internet really easily. There's thousands of versions of it. Now the image base, we want a transparent background. If you just open the image directly in Affinity Designer it may well default to give you a transparent background but otherwise create a a um, pattern, a design, and with a with a um, transparent background, humming and harring there. Sorry about that. Load the Triumph logo image and lock the background if you wish. I like to lock the background because you don't want to accidentally change your original design. Now the pen tool. Select the pen tool and you'll be able to set the defaults for curve width and colour. Draw the first line so you can set your defaults. You can't set them until you start drawing a line, unfortunately in this version. The colour's black. I've set it to a 2 pixel width. Now use the context toolbar or the stroke studio to do that. You actually really don't have to have it 2 pixel but it makes it a little bit easier to see than one pixel. And you can see the context toolbar, it's already in, ed, in draw mode, It's the, the pen is selected, it's two pixels and its colour is black and there's no other options selected. We're not using fill at this stage. Now you can also see up the time, top there where the Stroke Studio um, has the same settings. Now we've got a line, you can see the first dot is just where the head of the arrow is and I've put the second dot across on the other side. It will automatically draw the line between it. If you haven't already discovered this, the pen tool doesn't actually work like a pen. It works by connecting the dots. So if you've had lots of practice connecting the dots when you were a little child, this should be easy. Now, you can see your first line here. You can see that it's a, there's a white square on the left, um, a red and blue square on the right, and there's a very faint blue line between them. That's just what you need to start with. Now, continue the line all the way around. Don't start and stop. Um, otherwise you'll run into problems. Continue on from the last point. That's the blue square on the top and I've put another square, another dot, below the circle. Don't need to work your way around the circle. Let's just do the lines first. Jump straight across the curves. You'll see why in a moment. Now switch to edit mode in the context toolbar and drag out each corner so it's an accurate curve. Now that's easy, isn't it? You may need to pinch out the image to enlarge it so you can make sure you get that exactly right. But you can see there I did have the line straight across from the bottom blue dot to the top white and red dot and you just use the point of the pencil to drag that curve out. Make sure you're in edit mode or you'll be adding other lines in which case you just backspace out of it. Do that all the way around. Now you can check that by unselecting the background layer in the Layer Studio. You can see the tick has been removed and I've got the curves layer that I've just drawn highlighted. There's your border right there. Now save your work. This is very important. How often do you forget to do this? Every time. Go back to the opening screen and you can see I've got the little square there with the triangle in it. Name your work and save it. You can see the little sandwich stack there on the right hand side of that icon. 
And you can see a few other motorbike logos there. Good practice if you are looking to improve your pen drawing design skills. Now, back to the work screen, select document and save. Now you're sure. If you haven't, <coughs> excuse me, if you haven't saved it from the main opening menu, then when you go to documents and look for save, you'll only have save a copy. You've got to start off from that front menu, give it a name, save it. Then when you're back in the document, you can just tap save as many times as you like. It'll be there and you can save your working document. Once you get used to doing that, it's really easy. Now let's continue. Turn on the background again. Can you see the white layer behind the black? It's very faint there, of course, because we've got a transparent background, but there is a white layer, a white triangle layer behind all that. And we're going to need that, so we have to put it in. Select the black outline layer, duplicate it, then select the move tool and drag the corners out. So it, it's a good fit to the white background shape and you can still see it there. We've got a second black outline but it's in line with the edges of the white background although the corner is a bit further out. Now you have to fiddle about to get this adjusted. It's not difficult so take your time doing it. Don't worry too much about the corners just yet, we'll fix that. When you're satisfied, select either the node tool or the pen tool again and put it in edit mode and fix the corners. Now select the fill and select white. Very nice. So now you've got a white triangle or in yeah, white inverted triangle is the best way of putting that. Now drag the white layer so it's below the black outline layer. At this point, you may still have some aligning to do. That's fine, go ahead. I have both layers selected, for, selected there for clarity. So you can see that I'm talking about the black outline layer and the white triangle layer. Now the black outline layer is on top of the white triangle. The complete original background is turned off. Just how we want it. Now, drag the background logo layer above the white triangle so you can see it. Be careful there, don't drop it in the white triangle because you'll have to get it out again. You're not masking it, just dragging it above the white triangle. And there, they're all nice and perfectly aligned. Um, your context toolbar is in edit mode because I'm still in pen mode. Just using the Apple Pencil to drag that layer up above the white triangle so I can see it. Now, let's draw the two shapes and the word. You can see I've got a white triangle, a background, and I've got a curve layer and a top curve layer, but there's only one highlighted. Now, there's a nice little trick here. Select the tool on the lower right, and all the curves you draw will all be on the same layer. Now, if you look carefully at that image, you can see I've got the left sort of bracket shape and the right bracket shape, and they're both selected. If they were two separate layers, then those two separate layers would be selected. But before I started drawing, I tapped that little blue circle in the bottom right-hand side there. It looks like two circles joined together in the middle of it. Select that and then every curve you draw from then on will be on the same layer. So both those curves, left and right angle brackets, are on that same layer. Easy? When you want to stop doing that, just unselect that tool on the bottom right hand side. I don't think the tool actually has a name. It's got a description in the help file, but I don't know that it's actually got a name like all-in-one layer tool. Let's call it that. Now, select the fill circle in the colour wheel and fill them with white. Too easy. Now, you know how to do that. When you select that circle, it'll show your colours and it'll show the donut shape for the outline and the full circle for the fill. 
So make sure you tap it as white and there it is. It'll fill in those angle bracket shapes with white. Now for the word triumph. Ha! You can see I left the easy bit to last. Well, maybe it's easy, maybe it's not. Now there are some little things here that you might want to look carefully at. See the T of triumph? It's a little difficult to see here, admittedly. The top left-hand side of the T, the top T bar, is slightly curved. The bottom right-hand side of the top T bar, the cross piece, is slightly curved. As is the top left of the R, the top left of the I, the top left of the uprights of the U, the M left, the P left upright, and the H, both uprights, the top left side of those, are slightly curved. Now that's not difficult to do, and I'll show you in a moment. But they're the little hidden things you've got to look for when you come back to it. Now, the font looks pretty close to Arial. Don't go trying to find the exact font. You'll spend hours wasting your time doing that. So we'll work with Arial. Notice the rounded corners. Sorry folks, just turning my phone, iPhone off there, it's leaping away. Now you can see the rounded corners, Arial doesn't have that, but it's a good font to start with. So type out the bare word and position that as best you can. And you can see there I've used the in the text mode, the little alphabet in the toolbar on the right hand side, and set text positioning. Now I've moved the words so the T, R, U, M, P, H are about as good as I can get them there. That's okay. Once you've got that and the whole word is selected, that's an image at the moment, it's a word image, then convert the word to curves so we can easily work with it. You could spend the time tracing each letter if you like, but mm, that's difficult. Why not do it the easy way to start with? We're saving time here, remember? Now, <clears throat> let's take each letter at a time, starting with the letter T, because they're curves now, so each letter is separated. Select the Node tool. You can see at the moment there, it's in the Move tool is selected. It's got the little square all around it. You can use that to position where each word sits over the T-R-I-U-M-P-H, so you can get it pretty much right where you want it to start with. Then select the node tool. Okay, still with me? You can begin by pulling each letter into shape. Yes, the letters are black at the moment and we haven't filled the body of the original triangle outline we did with black. It's, it's no, no colour at the moment, the white show, showing through. But because those letters are like they are, they're actually curved letters. You can see them in the in the drop down um, layer list there. And we've got the T selected, it's a black T, it's a curve. We can make that any shape we like really, but just stretch it out so it fills the underlying T, which is the background underneath it. It's an exact copy. So deselect the curved letter and select the background logo. You can see the outline of the letter clearly. This makes it easy to shape them. Now you can see I've got the R selected in the layers panel but not ticked, so it's not active. The background, however, is active. So you can see the shape of the R underneath it. Now you've got to carefully drag the shape out so that it is a neat fit on top of the original R. Now I know we've got that long sloping swirl away from the R, we're going to deal with that in a moment. But it makes it easy to shape them when you can see the outline of your letter over the top of the original. And here we're also going to have to modify the curve of the R. You can see I've still got the same, the R is selected but not active, 
and the background is active. So here we are, nearly finished. The lettering is relatively simple if you remember to convert the letters to curves. And you can use guides to help keep the letters on a baseline. If you think you're going off um, horizontal or your letters don't line up along their bases, just draw a, put a guide there right along the bottom because you can turn guides on and off. And although I've got a guide there, I think I've got it turned off at the moment. Now you can see I've got each letter, T-R, the curve of the R, I-U-M-P-H, and I've got them now changed to the colour white. You can see the third bottom layer. Okay, let's go to the bottom. I've got a white inverted triangle. That's our triangle background to the black triangle. The background is unselected and unticked. We don't want to show the background. There's the black triangle. You just select that in the layers list. Go to the color channel. Select the fill option. Remember, you've got a fill and a donut in the color panel. Select the fill and change it to white or black. Sorry. There's your. You've got a black outline and you've got a black fill. You've got the two angles, left and right, and then TRI UMPH. Too easy. And you might be able to just see there I've got the left hand edge of the top of the verticals and the T bar have that little curve on them. Now each layer is locked, so you can't accidentally change it. The original image is now deselected and you can now export your pure SVG file. Now, I haven't shown it here, but if you look on the left hand toolbar, one, two, three, four, the fifth tool down looks like a dot on a corner. So to get the curve on each of your verticals there, in, select the node tool, select the top left Tap the top left corner, for example, of the T-bar with the curve tool selected, then just drag slightly down and to the right and you'll see a circle expand away from that top toolbar. When it's got the suitable sized curve that you want there, just let it go and move on to the next one. That's really easy, setting curves on the edges of corners like that. There's your pure SVG file, ready to go. Finished. T-R-I-U-M-P-H. Clear background, so that's no problem. The white background with the black triangle and the word triumph and the two angles, which I believe are symbols of the British flag or the corners of the British flag, the interior. There you go. Thank you for watching. What a triumph. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate it if you do.